Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and I am here today as part of a special collaboration. I hope you'll stick around, find out more about it, and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. If you didn't already know, I am part of the Not Too Shabby Design Team. Each month, I stop by with a few videos sharing some of the latest products from Not Too Shabby, and this month I have joined in on kind of an extra bonus hop or collaboration. Today, a few of the design team members will be sharing projects on their channels, and we would all love for you to see what we made, give our video a thumbs up, and leave some love while you're there. Now, when you're done with my video, you can see what everybody else has created using the hashtag in the title, or if you want to search for it, I have it up on the screen now. I cannot wait to see what everyone else has done with some of the July products. Today, I'm going to be using the newest stamp of the month, which is called Berry Christmas, as well as a stencil from the box of the month called Here Comes the Sun. This month's stencil is called a dual design because one side of it is more kind of straight rays that come out and the other side are more wavy. So these can be used in a variety of different ways. You can use it like sun rays or you can just use it as fun decorative elements behind images or in a background. For the stamp set, you can no longer get just the stamp set by itself, but there are a few bundles left that come with the coordinating dies for the images, sentiments, and the little snowflake. So make sure to check out all of my links below. And I also have a coupon code there that you can't use on these products, but you can use on many other in the shop. As I add more products or tools along the way, I will be sure to let you know. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to get started today by doing the ink blending and stenciling. I got out a piece of white cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half and a couple inks lipstick and wild dandelion from Gina K designs. I know that I eventually want to put my image in the lower left corner of my card front. So that is where I'm going to focus my color at. I want the red and yellow to kind of start from that bottom left corner and blend out. Now I started with the red and I went a few times until I had some good coverage. Then I brought in my yellow and did a little blending with that as well. I went back and forth with the two brushes, adding ink and just using my brush where the two colors met. And now I have kind of a red, orange, and yellow in the background. When I laid this stencil out, I wanted to make it so you could do a full circle. And I want that circle to be behind where my image will be later. So I kind of figured out on the stencil where I would want that to go on the card front. And then I taped it in place with some painter's tape. Now one thing you do have to do is cover up any areas that you don't want ink blending on. So I covered the top of my card base and I covered the more straight rays at the bottom of the stencil. Then using those same two colors and trying to keep them in the same area on the background, I used the stencil and ink for blending. Now you'll see there my kitty cat did make an appearance, but once I got her down off the table, I did some blending here. I would say I went in twice maybe with each color and just made sure they overlapped and then I went back in with the previous brush to blend out kind of the orange color. Now to make the full circle. You will turn your stencil around and you'll see the last or the 
most center point, you are going to line those wavy lines up to what you stenciled already. So sometimes it's kind of eyeballing it there. It might take a little bit, but I tape that back in place. And since my colors were opposite now, um, I didn't want to move any yellow ink onto my red or vice versa. So I cleaned that off before putting my post-it notes back. For this, you will need to cover up those centermost squiggle lines or the ones that you just used to line up the stencil when you turned it around. Then once those post-its are in place, everything else is covered up so you can just ink blend your other colors. Here I'm using the same red and yellow as before and here's a look at that finished piece. Now I'm going to work on the focal point by using the stamp set. Now this is geared more toward winter or Christmas cards, but that little bear carrying the gift could definitely be used all year round, especially with the I come bearing gifts sentiment that goes with it. For now though, I'm just going to stamp my bear in the middle of a scrap of Nina Solar White using Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Once I have a nice solid image for my bear, I then bring in one of my favorite parts of the stamp set, the cheek dots, and using a stamp block for this, I inked it up with some bubblegum pink ink and gave my bear some rosy cheeks. I just seriously love this. Let me know below if you love those rosy cheeks too. I got out that coordinating die set, which comes in so handy for these images. And I also got out a couple dynamic stitched rectangle set. I'm gonna be using one on my ink blended piece and one on a scrap of black cardstock. I will be leaving my bear mainly black and white, but I did bring in a couple tri-blend markers, which I'll list the colors below, to add a little spotlight or selective coloring on the image. I decided that I would go ahead and match his gift to the ink blended background. I colored the box itself a solid yellow, and then I brought in the red marker and just added some polka dots. I thought this tied the image and the background together and added a little fun. Now we're gonna add the sentiment to the card front. Once again, I'll be using the I Come Bearing Gift Sentiment to make it more of like a birthday card or a different occasion you might give a gift for. To make sure my sentiment is going to line up later with my focal point, I did place my bear on that background while I was setting up the stamp. I wanted to make sure that the sentiment would stand out nicely, so I did ink it up and stamp it a couple times. Then, because all of the pieces were ready, I could get this card put together. I brought in a top fold card base from my stash, and I adhered the stenciled piece to the black mat. I just love the extra detail the stitching gives on each of these rectangles. Then to add some dimension, I had added foam tape to the back of my bear and I placed that centered above the sentiment. And you know that I'm going to want to add some bling or sparkle, so I brought in some new to me embellishments and those are the This Calls for Confetti opal pieces. I did get these in the not too shabby shop and I will make sure to link them below if they're still available. I chose five from my little container and I laid those out on the card front. And once I liked that, I brought in my fine tip glue bottle, added some dots of glue. Now I do let this sit for probably five or 10 seconds so the glue gets a little tacky. And then I place each of the embellishments onto a dot of glue. I gave that about five minutes to dry, and when that was dry off screen, I stamped the bare image on the inside in a light yellow. And here are some close-up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's card. 
If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go watch the rest of the hot videos by clicking on that hashtag in the title or in the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.